All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about Makuna extract. I'm going to talk about whether or not I believe it's actually a tonic herb and what its actual uses and benefits are, when it would be appropriate to use and when not to use it. Because uh, I've been getting this question quite a bit lately, and it's something that I think deserves some clarification. And Makuna is an herb that I've been familiar with for well over a decade and been selling for well over a decade as well. And much to people's surprise, <laughs> I don't really believe that it's necessarily a tonic herb in the same way that reishi or cordyceps or gynostema or lion's mane or chaga or things like that are. I think makuna is more something that someone could take if they need it and something that's more should be used on probably a short-term basis and taking breaks on. So things like reishi or, or gynostema, for example, people can take on a regular basis over the long term and generally there won't be any side effects. There won't, be any, won't really be any extreme reactions and it'll just be gently pretty safe, balanced and mild over the long term. But with Makuna, I don't think that's necessarily the same mechanism. And something like this might seem like splitting, <laughs> splitting hairs to some people, but in reality it's quite important because now that tonic herbs and adaptogens and these things are becoming a bit more trendy and popular, there's a lot of people who are getting into this type of thing and they don't really understand the words and the differences between the words <laughs> and also the various um, aspects of each of the herbs, meaning they haven't worked with these herbs or that particular herb for 10 or 15 years. So they don't necessarily have the personal experience. They don't necessarily have the experience working with people in many different scenarios, whether that's face to face or online. So oftentimes people just repeat whatever they read or some guru says, says something and it's exciting and we get hyped about it. And then people just repeat that for the next decade or more. Which is nothing wrong with it, you know. It's it's just part of what happens as things grow and as people get more interested in things like this. So I think Makuna is definitely beneficial for people who need it. Someone who's maybe burnt out or depleted their dopamine levels or just toasted their nervous system, it can be useful. Or perhaps as like a short-term nootropic can be beneficial. Um, I've also talked to some of my clients that are bodybuilders. And they've noticed that it's helped out with their their gains <laughs> and their ability to perform in that context. So I think in those, perhaps those situations it can be beneficial. But to say that it's like an adaptogen or something like gynostema that a person that lots of people could take and across the board it's generally going to be pretty good. I really would not say that. I think Makuna is something that's a bit more specific. And Makuna's actions, its benefits in the body are, I think, a bit more focused and a bit more targeted and specific than something like, I don't know, um, cordyceps or gynostema or something or reishi, where they can have a whole lot of different effects on the body and can really modulate different mechanisms and different functions. Whereas Makuna, it's like, You've got the L-DOPA, that's kind of its main claim to fame, and that's really where probably most of the benefits are gonna come from. So, which is great if you need that, but if you don't, then it might not really be that beneficial. Uh, not to say that it's necessarily gonna be harmful, um, because I've, I think when I've taken it, the worst that it's ever done for me when, whenever I, um, Whenever I was taking it, I just was like, oh, I don't really need this. I think I got like a slight rash on my skin or on my arm, like a small little, like some red dots. And then I was like, oh, it's probably the Makuna. Stopped, went away. So I was like, oh yeah, probably don't need that. <laughs> um, but I had just been many years since I had taken it. And actually there was there was a time where I stopped selling it because um, because of this reason, because of like, well, it's not really a tonic herb. It's not really going to be, I don't think, super beneficial for a wide variety of people. It's something that's much more specific. So I stopped selling it, but then a lot of people were very upset because they were 
really needing it and using it for specific purposes, which I guess I, <laughs> I didn't consider beforehand. So I was like, oh, okay, so now I sell it, now it's still there. Um, and then another question that comes up a lot is the, uh, the extract that I sell. Many people are used to seeing Makuna that's brown, perhaps, uh, and this is a couple reasons. First is mine's a, a 10 to one hot water extract that we have tested and verified to at least 15% L-DOPA. Many, if not most of the Makuna products that are available are just ground up seeds, ground up raw herb. So it'll usually be darker in color and have a different texture and consistency, which is not necessarily anything wrong with it because it's like a bean, but I'm not entirely sure um, of the efficacy uh, just because it's a raw thing and you might have to take way more to get an effective dose so it kind of just depends on really what someone's working on but basically the, the extract that I have I've it's just basically the same one I've had for quite a long time <laughs> and uh, we we lab test it we verify it to be at least 15% uh, L-DOPA but and also keep it with at that uh, 10 to 1 ratio and I've got a lot of people that have been buying it for years people that buy like three pounds at a time because they're using it for specific um, issues, specific uh, things that are really benefited by L-DOPA. But uh, anyways, it's it's a great herb if you need it. It's a great herb in that <laughs> what it can do, not many other things can really do. So I just kind of wanted to make this video to clear those things up. And just personally, I don't really believe or feel that it's a true adaptogen or tonic herb like reishi or gynostem or something like that, for example. However, it's still great <laughs> if, if you need it. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you want to learn more, definitely check out HyperionHerbs.com, and I'll talk to you soon.